Hey and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we have Waze Lithium-ion Phosphate 12.8 volts 100 amp hour. This is the model. Let's get started. In today's video we'll talk about and look at the Waze battery and we'll test it as always what's in the box. We'll talk about the specification, what, a, what it's capable of. We'll do a capacity test. We'll do a high load discharge test, so high current discharge test and as well some more testing in terms of teardown and then we'll check it out what's inside what it is capable of in channel so let's get started with what's in the box so let's talk about what's in the box the battery itself and you can see this battery does come with those whoop, very common in the meantime um, protective caps plastic caps on top of the m8 bolts and it comes in two sets those m8 bolts it comes with a sleek small user manual with uh, the specification in it, it has some you know, content on this page, obviously. I'm always taking a closer look on the battery specification and I'll share it with you because the specification is what we talk about next. So looking at the specification and we, we're talking about the LP12100, we have a TPLI. <laughs> I, I don't know what this stand for, stands for. I mean, a lithium ion, I guess, 12100 amp hour. So when we talk about it, we have a standard charge current of 20 amps, allowed maximum charge current of 100 amps. Same with the discharge current and a peak current up to 10 seconds, 200 amp. And this is very, very impressive. So in general, we're talking about this waste battery, which is a, I believe, I believe a group 31 housing. So it is bigger than the recent batteries we looked at with group 24 or mini batteries. This is group 21, the more basic and the more default battery, which we have seen. Um, so they still exist and they are still making them. Almost every Chinese manufacturer produces those waste batteries. Uh, same with this one. So it does come in this gray blue housing with this black sticker. It has some information on top which talks about parallel and series connection and it says the number of batteries is in series is less than four piece or up to less than or equals four piece and the number of batteries parallel is less or equals ten piece. This is impressive and there are some pictures on how to wire them which is cool that they stick it just on top. So pretty nice. Let's continue about uh, the dimensions. So regarding dimensions, those are the dimensions. And here we can see a picture with the smart BMS protection and uh, also talking about the crate air cells that this one comes with crate air cells. So it does have protection over charge, over discharge, over current, short circuit, high temperature cutoff, low temperature, low temperature cutoff. So high and low temperature cutoff will test at the end after the teardown when we have access to the temperature sensors and the overcurrent. Um, I did try to test this and I will have more information after the capacity test. So first thing we'll start is capacity test of the battery. So charging to full and then do a capacity test and see how much we can actually pull with this battery. Here we have a fully charged battery. Just unlock the charger from our waste battery. So let me reset everything and then we can start the capacity test. So to prove you by the way, here is our waste battery. All right, let's get started with the capacity test. All right, here we are a little bit, a little bit below 0.2 C, we'll ramp up a little bit more. And I will be back as soon as we have the results in and see how much this battery can actually deliver. If it is 100 amp hour, less or more. Let's see. Oh yeah, that is amazing to see. 103.75 amp hours out of this 100 amp hour battery from Waze. That passed the capacity test. 103 amp hour out of this 100, advertised, 100 amp hour advertised battery. That is amazing and that is really nice to see. That means we'll continue with a high current discharge test and see how much we can actually pull. According to the manual, according to the user manual, we should be able to pull 200 for up to 10 seconds. And let's see if that is possible. Okay, so we, here we have it. Let's try the peak discharge. That's how they call it. So I'm checking the specification sheet again, just to double check. Peak discharge current at 10 seconds for, yeah, up to 200 amps. Uh, just double checking that I'll read reading the right one. Yeah, it's the LP. Let's give it a try. It looks like that's what you're dealing with. So 100 is the, they call it max discharge current of 100. So we'll go to 100. At least we'll try to get there. Yeah, ish. 
looks good. Just, I just want to have it at least 10 seconds to see that it is actually working at 100. Looks pretty good if you ask me. I'll get, in the meantime, really quick. Nice, there we go. All right, nice, I think that's pretty good. Let's, let's increase it, huh? Nice. See if we can get higher with it. Okay, let's see how far we can get now. I had a quick smell, which I didn't like. So right now, all right, 80, pretty solid state. Let's see, I need to the second charger. And we should exactly. Nice. Let's see. All right. 200. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow. Nice. That is impressive. I'll stop here immediately. Nice. All right. I, I like what I've seen. I think uh, we want to go higher, as much as I understand me just to see what's the max when it stops. Let's see. Wow. Yeah, 250 watt meter here. Let's see. That's the inverter. Okay, so I think we got a proof. It is possible. It's even more possible. So unfortunately, my setup is not made for the super high current yet. So I'll try to fix that as I mentioned already in a couple other videos. And I try to get the highest possible current, like to advertise and make and point out Will Prowse, his um, high current test built with resistors, and that's just uh, where I want to get. So we'll see if that's possible at one point. And so far, up to 250 amp out of this battery for a longer period of time, great. Uh, my setup, setup is made with some fuses, so the fuse did start smelling, which is pretty not cool, but um, I always like to fuse my stuff just, you know, because when you have a battery which can you know, push more out than you think. Uh, that can be dangerous, especially when you have smaller wires. Um, so make sure when you anticipate only pulling 200 amp, size your wires and all components accordingly. So mine is not made for continuous to over 250 amp. So that's why it's just not possible. So sorry about that, but um, at least 200 amp for 10 seconds, at least even more is possible. So I don't know about the protection here, I don't know when that will trip. Definitely over 250 it looks like. Just sharing the information, I hope this helps you to decide what you want to get. Because usually um, those trolling motor batteries have this high of a battery, but this battery, um, I believe already years back, um, Will Prowse was testing this. Up there's a video um, in the past and he retested it I think as well so that it didn't change a lot. So we'll see if this is the case. And then, you know, you can make your decision if that's with it or not. By the way, that was the first battery I bought myself in the past as well. I was pretty happy with that uh, for the longest time, but uh, after the Krug 24 came out I and the Minis, <laughs> I knew in which direction I want to go. But now testing this Krug 31, having so much power, this is nice to see, you know, whatever your uh, configuration will be at the end and what do you want to use it for. All right, let's go to the teardown, take it apart, and let's see how the build quality is as well as the low and high temp cutoff. Uh, actually does protect the battery or not. So I'll open it up for you and then we'll take a closer look what's inside. So there we are, it's open. I get it out and first thing we see, epoxy boards everywhere. And those are the high density forms to the side. So that is not moving around. Same we have here on those sides, so it's not moving around. And everything else is inside. So we'll 
open it up now for you. So what we can see here is a BMS. We have hydraulic crimped uh, seven gauge wire, positive over here. Hydraulic crimped on both sides. And we see there's, oh, I see there's a blob of glue over here. There's also a glue blob over here. I guess that's basically the Loctite, in quotes, Loctite they use. And then there's also a mark that they torqued it down here. I don't see that here on those terminal screws. And on this side, we have two 10 gauge wires. Wow, 10 gauge only, interesting. Um, going here to the BMS. And BMS, so a Saihang branded BMS, it looks like, up to 100 amp. Haven't heard about it. By the way, no Bluetooth. Um, that's what it was, that's what it was advertised with. So I didn't even test this. I can see there's a temperature sensor over here, which goes into uh, somewhere in the cells. I'll open up in a minute. So we have a heat sink for the BMS. We have the balance leads, they clued. Same with like the temperature sensors and nothing's moving. We have some torque uh, marks over here on those bolts. I like always to see bolts. There's no clue on it, which is interesting because everything else had, had a little clue on them. They don't. Um, so this is the terminal coming in. That's the main negative from the battery. So when I take this off, there's some fish paper underneath. Temperature sensor is just clued on the first cell, it looks like. So I should be able to yep, pull it out. Show you where that is in a second. And then we can yep, flip it back. Nice. So, whoop, bus bars. I'll try to expose everything here a little bit more so we can see the quality. So, good. What you can see here, the vents are breathable. That's important. We do see the balance leads are actually screwed in. And they also have glue on top. Then we have the bus bars, which have a little hump here, so they can compress and extract, so that's good. We see they have epoxy boards. They have epoxy boards in between all cells together. It's actually pretty small, to be honest, and which is funny. Those cells look similar to another battery up there, which actually, when you rotate it, when you take into consideration that here's a, a little a high density foam here, everything in the smaller housing, yeah, it would work. I'm curious if uh, Waze is doing that. I'm really curious about that, but it's cool to see. I mean, you know, there are use cases people want to have the Group 31. So there's a, a, there are actually use cases for that. So I'm not blaming them to still offer that when people want it. So anyways, but then we can see there is some labeling on the cells. I will show you in a minute. Speaking about um, those cells, they were just, you know, underneath the fish paper here. Yeah, laser welded. Bus bars everywhere, main negative, main positive over here. Um, looks good to me. I mentioned there's glue on top. And when I rotate them, that's what I want to show you. You can see here, 28, 280, I don't know how it. I guess that's kind of where they charge it up. 2.80, I don't know. And then put it together, I have no idea. But here you can see how small it would be, or could be. Anyways, um, I try to get to the cells itself. I wanna see if I can. All right, yeah, it found it, but no information actually. We can see here, those are the information which I've, which I scanned. It looks like that's the number. All right, maybe, maybe you can do something with it. Okay, let's continue. Um, those are the QR codes, so they're readable. Looks like it's not old cells or whatever, so that's also good to see. Let's continue, because um, I mean, you see everything from here, I feel like. There is nothing else besides I can take the epoxy board completely off, so you see everything even more, but there's no reason for that. Um, yeah, we have those straps around, so it keeps it tight, and then we have the epoxy board, layer one, layer two, and then, yeah, same with up here. So now we'll do, um, I'll set everything up for the high end cold temp cutoff test, and then we'll go from there. All right, here, as always, we have our charger. Currently charging with 10.4. Hope you can see that. And we have, there we go, the temperature sensor. So first thing we'll do is a high temp cutoff test. Let's see um, if it does trigger. And there it does trigger. You can see it already. Let's see how quick it comes back. And there it is already. Nice. So that works. Next test we'll do uh, with the duster, so ultra cold. And if that works, 
we'll continue with the actual ice pack and see um, if it does trigger in a more nature zero degree Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit fashion. So let me get this sprayed. There we go. Nice. So it does work. Let's see how quick it comes back. There it is, and charging again. Really nice to see. So now the ice packs. We are. Let's see. It cools down. Since the duster can be, you know, way less than minus 20, ice packs are more solid to check if it's a more human nature it should you know stop charging at around zero or less not around less than zero degrees celsius you know, it's back nice so that i'll test everything what's advertised um what i was able to test testable it works uh except for <laughs> the high current protection that's something which i'm not sure about when that will trigger but i remember that the test from uh, will prowse was a very high test so a high current test and this battery was able to maintain that so keep that in mind work with fuses with the right wire sizes and then you're good to go because um, as always the BMSs are so different you see this is a I don't know what what a different brand which I've never seen so it's always the case or can be the case that it just you know might not trip if it's not a properly uh, configured so I'm done I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you like that what, I, what I've tested so far um, please like the video subscribe to your channel it means a lot to me and thanks for watching Cheers.